This video is looking at saccharides, monosaccharides and disaccharides, that have been their structure and their properties. Saccharides are sugars. Um, each monomer, each single block, each monosaccharide, we see that there are four types. We can see the four types of monosaccharide that we need to know about here. Alpha glucose and beta glucose, glucose comes in two forms, fructose and galactose. Each of these monosaccharides has the same chemical formula, C6H12O6. However, they're arranged differently. So whilst they might have the same elements and indeed the same number of elements, the way in which those elements are arranged is different. Due to this, we say that they're isomers, that being they have the same chemical formula but a different structure arrangement. When we join each of these monosaccharides together, we form what's called a disaccharide, disaccharide meaning two. We can see the disaccharides that we need to know about listed here. Maltose is made from two alpha glucose joined together, sucrose from an alpha glucose and a fructose, and lactose from an alpha glucose and a galactose. So how do we join these monosaccharides together to form a disaccharide? Well, if we look at this diagram here, you can see that I've got the diagram of an alpha glucose and diagram of a beta glucose. Now I've chosen these two monosaccharides to show you, to illustrate how, although they are both C6H12O6, we can see that there are very subtle differences in their structural arrangement with the H and the OH group, which I've picked out here and here. And it's this difference in structural arrangement which gives these monosaccharides different properties. So how do we join these two monosaccharides together? We join them together using something called the condensation reaction, so-called because it produces water. It involves this OH group and the HO group of these two monosaccharides. What happens is we create a bond between the two monosaccharides using these elements. Now, as I said before, the condensation reaction means that we get the formation of water. So we can see where the hydrogens have come from, there and there, to form these hydrogens. And one of the oxygens is used here to form water, whereas the other oxygen, let's get rid of that one, the other oxygen is held in the middle of this bond. The bond has a name, a glycosidic bond. Now it's important during the exam questions when they ask you about the formation of disaccharides, when they ask you what you produce when you join two monosaccharides together, the obvious answer is that you form a disaccharide and you may even be able to name it using these ones here. But it's also important that you say that we produce water as well. Although water is the byproduct, it is still a product, so we still need to name it. And often you'll need to say the disaccharide, or the name of the disaccharide, and the formation of water just to get one mark. So it's always worth saying. What often catches people out as well is they ask for the chemical formula of a disaccharide. And often people will just double the formula of a monosaccharide. Now that's not, that's not the case. This is the formula for any disaccharide. Because... The hydrogen doesn't double because we've used some of it in the water, so it's not present in the disaccharide. And again, the oxygen doesn't just double because although one oxygen does remain in the disaccharide, the other oxygen has been used in the production of water. Now all of these monosaccharides that we've talked about have the properties of that they are sweet and that they are soluble. These monosaccharides that we're talking about also are called hexose sugars. And you can see the reason why, because as you lay out their diagram, they are hexagon in shape. 